What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm Sean. And I'm Corey. And we're back with episode number 30 of No Labels Necessary. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday on YouTube, Apple Music, Spotify, wherever you stream your podcast, talking about music and content culture. And of course, we're back and starting with advice as always. Some of y'all might notice that the room looks a little different and don't have a black background. We're in process of making podcast progress with this room, you know what I mean? One step at a time. One step at a time, baby, one step at a time. And always, as always, rather, let's get into the first thing that we like to touch on, which is some advice. I think so many of you artists can take on this advice. The attention is in the details, but the most important part of this is the person who's saying it and the story behind it. Artists, listen up. Check out this video from Anderson Pack. Hey Anderson, Anderson Pack, I, I kept the dot there because I remember um, my mentor at the time was saying, you know, you got all the talent in the world, but you don't have really much work ethic. And I think if you just lock yourself in a room and work on just you mm. for a certain amount of time, you could probably come out of it with something, you know? And at the time I was playing drums for this person, I was trying to make beats for this person, I was rapping, I was, was doing so much stuff. Mm -hmm because I could, I was capable of it, but I ain't never just, okay, let's just make a, an album just for me and let's let's figure out what the sound I want and um, wh what is my voice, you know, trying to find it. And um, after I came out of that process, I, I kept the dot there to remind me that uh, you gotta pay attention uh, to detail. Mm. Mm. Gotta pay attention to detail. Gots too, gots too. And that quote right there, is is dope because you obviously see what Anderson Pack has become, yeah. right? I was about to say this, this is a younger Anderson Pack, right? Is this recent Anderson? This is recent. I, he looked different. What you mean he looked different? No, he looked younger. Like he looked like he aged backwards. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's called life is good, money is great. Like, apparently, man. Right? Like, man, this is like a 19, 20 year old. But okay, right, right, this, this, is, this is relatively recent. So you know, it's not. Younger Anderson Pack because a part of his story is he got fired from a weed farm and he was homeless for a while. I remember that. Yeah, he worked on a weed farm and his wife and his kid were on the streets for a little bit. So I don't think they interviewed him that guy. Yeah, he, he, he looked he looked healthy with a home. He was yeah, healthy and wealthy. <laughs> you, know what I mean? you see, so look, there's a couple things that he said. The, the attention to detail, the period in his name, I think that's dope having a nice reminder and everything. Yeah. But number one, there's a lot of artists that I talk to that struggle with the idea of being good at multiple things. Yeah. Great even, right? And it's one thing to say you're good at multiple things and you aren't really, you're delusional. We can always talk about that bunch, but yeah. let's talk about the ones that truly are like pretty dope at multiple things, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. One, how do you focus? Right? Things are coming so easy to you. Where is the work ethic? Because you don't have to work to wow people. Yeah. It's like the the uh the genius student, you know what I'm saying? Like that whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think when you look at Anderson, that's that's a great example because he actually did like move around so much. I remember when he popped back up, I was like, man, I could have sworn that he rapped more than he sang for a period of time, and then I was hearing him sing more for a period of time. Just the way I was personally introduced to him, right? right. And yeah. everything I heard was dope and high quality. Even if some songs might not have been my favorite type of song, right? I could recognize it as high quality. I yeah. had never seen him do something that I didn't think was quality. So he has that ability to obviously be great in multiple areas. But the biggest part outside of, oh, you know, what do they say? Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard, yeah. right? Outside of that aspect of it, the fact that Anderson Pack talked about finding his sound, that's another big thing that I see a lot of talented musicians face because I can go mimic this person, mimic that person, write a song for this person and that person and that person, and I'm spending so much time doing that and offering my services and my creativity elsewhere, I never spend time finding my own personal sound. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would think it would be a little bit easier for songwriters though because they get to kind of like see where to stay away from, 
Right, like people are asking you for a certain sounds. Over. And I could be wrong, man. I would love to hear like a songwriter's perspective on this, but I, I would think like, hey, if everybody's hitting me up saying I want the weekend sound, that means I know all my shit needs to be over here. You know what I'm saying? My shit needs to kind of sound left. Like I, I would, I would kind of, you know, think I could that see that on. perspective from a, like a market aspect of it. But I think the problem that a lot of them face is not knowing what marketplace void to fill. Because actually, that's a, a part of the problem. Yeah, you're thinking about the market boy from a business perspective but never still finding yourself yeah right that's a good point yeah i'm always being a chameleon putting myself in all these different identities it's like being an actor yeah all right it's like so now i have if i want to write from a rihanna perspective i have to think and project myself in that space and then write from it i get out of touch with writing from who i am and expressing it in a way that touches touches people in a way that feels different Cause I'm always hijacking other people, right? Yeah. So it's like, who am I? And we know a lot of songwriters who have written a lot of songs for people, but don't have that career or find it trouble getting over that hump. And you know they're dope, so you're like, man, how come? You know, when they create that joint for them, it doesn't hit the song. You know the pen game. The pen game is dope. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. The pen specifically. <laughs> how come they can't? Connected the same way. And I'm not even talking about, oh, because you gave your best song away to somebody else. No, even when you sang that song, it just, eh, it didn't scratch the same. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that finding yourself is probably an issue that a lot of artists face because, you know, I feel like being creative is one of those spaces that when you're creative, especially musically, you tend to be creative at multiple things, good at multiple things, because yep. it falls under the box of creativity, yep. right? Yep. It's like being athletic. Like, I'm athletic. I go play a sport that I never really heard of, and I'll be good at that shit in like two days. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I go run and play soccer now. I never play soccer, and I'll be doing all kind of crazy shit because I just see it. I'm always like making fun of soccer people in my head. But it looks like I know what I'm doing because I'm just mimicking. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying, but I don't know, man. <laughs> you're not, not that specific. You, you, you don't share that experience. What is it? Like we all probably have arenas like like that, though, right? And creativity is like that type of arena. Is like what is really the difference between, you know, one song versus another song? If you really are a writer, yeah. right? If you really are a singer, how many singers do we know? I mean, yeah, I can sing country style. I can sing. Like R and B style, my voice voice wise, you might not feel it as strong, right? Because it's not as authentic for me from different ones. But like technically, I can do it. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. I think the understated part when it comes to being an artist is spending that time to find out who the fuck you are. Yeah, but but even to yo your first point, like what does the artist that it's good. A lot of things that, you know, hypothetically speaking, let's just say I'm a, I'm just all around creative. Like I want to do music. Maybe music is like here for me, but I'm really great at engineering and I'm really great at graphic design. Mm. Decent. I'm decent to good at music, yeah. but I'm really great at these other things. How do I know that me is not within that graphic design lane? You know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm over here chasing music artists lane or even vice versa. How do I know not even put my energy into this thing just because I'm good at it, even though, you know, because me might be over here and, and artists. That's me, the catch, you know right? Because you got people, yeah, who not only are they good at multiple things, they actually like those multiple things or even love it. And how do you know? I don't think you actually do. I think you just have to pick. That's how I think. Yeah. Like a straight logic. And then <laughs> the rest of it. Let God unravel it as I go. Oh, some random opportunity that I was that I wasn't intentionally looking for at the moment. I was engineering, and then all of a sudden they were like, "Hey, you you need to be singing." Or I was singing, and then I helped somebody on the boards, and they're like, "Okay, man, yo, your engineering game. Can you help me out with it?" Like Anderson, well, Anderson hopping around helping a lot of people. Right, he's um, executive produced projects, and you can hear. I forgot. Oh, it was somebody's project. That I'm thinking of that was so cohesive and sounded so good. I feel like it was a female artist that Anderson did. Um, but using that, right? Skill set. Mm-hmm. Not even singing on the project at all or rapping on the project at all. And then obviously he did his stuff with Bruno Mars. Obviously he's done the stuff by himself. I think 
within the professional realm of it, people like when they know, they know, like they recognize, oh yeah, you got that skill set and then they'll call on it. But from the space that you want to capitalize on primarily, I think you just got to pick. Yeah, I agree. I think picking and sticking with one long enough to be able to like accurately assess opportunity cost. And opportunity cost. cost. Yes. You know, because yeah, I'm trying yes. to, I don't remember who was it, but I remember hearing a, you know, one of these that Google motherfuckers said something along the lines of like, you know, that could be a good opportunity, like a good opportunity that's mm-hmm. stopping you from a great opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, so it's not a bad thing. It's not yeah. negative if you go do this thing. So there's possibly the thing that's a step or two above this that you now don't have the time for, you know? And I feel like the only way to truly know that, that even if I can know, because like you said, you'll never really know, but to even just feel good about it, I think it's to have done a, each of those things that you do love or like that could be you enough that you can start to like look out to the future and see what might come if I stick this. Test it out a little bit, see what it looks like for you. Yeah, it's not possible possible for you. So, like, you're the artist, engineer, cover art guy, and, like, you take, I don't know, a month to seriously promote your cover art business, and, you know, in that month, you end up getting, like, eight clients or some shit, and then you learn that four of them are are annoying because they want unlimited edits all the time, and you're like, nah, I really like this edit (laughs) shit. I like doing the first one draft because it's straight out my brain, but I don't really like this edit shit. Right. Then you know. Now you know, like, hey, if I continue down this path, it is going to be more of this, right? Because this is really all it is. Like, you assume, hey, if I grow and scale this thing, Whatever comes with it, I can assume that's going to multiply anywhere from two to, you know, infinite times over. You know what I'm saying? Depending on how successful you are. That part's fair. That part's fair. The reason I default to just pick, because a lot of times when I talk to people in this space, they overthink. Yeah. And there's nothing that's truly stopping them from starting, but they can't even start. Yeah. You know? And I have this concept where I believe that nobody's necessarily starting in their place of purpose, right? Yeah. Or the place of extreme passion. Some, there might be a small portion that are extremely lucky to like hit that groove right off the bat. You know, five years old, you know, you want to be a basketball player. I got a homegirl from five six. years ago. Oh, she wanted to <laughs> she, she knew she wanted to be a doc, uh, not a doctor, a dentist. Like, and she's a dentist now. Like that. Okay. Right. But that's rare. Yeah. Most people, are in a space where they need to build a skill set, right? Yeah. Like because your passion isn't necessarily here yet, but if you don't develop the skill set to do things on a high level when your passion comes, you're not going to be able to take full advantage of it. Yeah. Right? When that purpose, that opportunity comes, you're not going to be able to take advantage of it. So just because I get used to achieving things at a high level, I built I don't know, this festival where we built a YouTube page, we built a marketing com- uh, a company. We've done these things and have these skill sets. And all of a sudden, you know, you talk about the the hair related business. I don't want to put your shit, shit out there, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. But rock. like you, you might <laughs> find that opportunity and now you got all these skills that yeah. allow you to cap on that space. Yeah, and that yeah. could be your thing thing. Yeah. Right. So a lot of times people spend so much time not doing anything they don't develop a skill set and then all this time passes if that thing finally comes they can't even take advantage of it but yeah well see i feel like you just opened a, a different deeper conversation which is not being prepared for the thing that you want to be your thing you know what i'm yeah. saying because yeah. i do think that's 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 very real i feel like especially in music bro if you Sell yourself hard enough and you try hard enough, you eventually will be put in a situation that you always sell yourself for. And I feel like, oh shit, they really wanna like I've had campaigns before in the past. I was like, damn, they really clear the ambulance. Like I really gotta do all this shit I talked about on the call, you know what I'm saying? But then the person that typically I would argue really wants it or cares about it, they figure it out, right? Maybe figure out like, hey, I'm probably gonna fuck this up, but I'm gonna figure out how not to fuck it up so much. You know what I'm saying? Like if I'm I'm shooting for an eighty percent completion rate. So they ain't like too upset, right? But then the ones that don't really care about it, they usually just drop the ball and let the whole, the whole shit burn. You know what I'm saying? Because like, in that moment, they realize, oh, I didn't really want to do this shit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I was not prepared for the thing I thought I wanted to do. And then now going through the motions has taught me that I don't want to do that. Like I've been in that situation before. Like knee deep in a job or position that I just knew I wanted. And then you start and you're like, no, nah, this is terrible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't want to do it. I don't be doing this all day. So 
I think those are like two like two different sides of the same coin, kind of like not yeah. knowing and then also knowing but not being prepared for it. You know what I'm saying? Because you haven't gone through enough experiences and things that maybe aren't what you're passionate about. Because I do believe that like jobs that you aren't passionate about, they, like you said, teach you skills that will help you once you figure out what that is. And they keep you motivated to figure that shit out, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? I think about my last, like, day job. You know what I'm saying? Like, working at the clothing store, just standing up. You know how many times I was like, man, I can't wait to get out of this shit and start this marketing shit, bro. I can't wait to have campaigns. I can't wait to do these videos. And, it's like, that was, was all I thought about every day, bro. Like, I can't wait. I'm going to get out of this shit. And I feel like that's what, that's, what, that's what the other shit is for. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's to bring you life skills. And to remind you that you need to get out of this shit and go do the thing hey, <laughs> that you want to do. That's a fact. <laughs> hey, bro, you didn't know that standing up all day at a clothing store will prepare you to stand up at concerts. So that's a good point. Or even trying to sell used t-shirts to people surprisingly does trying to over there trying to get somebody to clear like a 20K invoice. Yeah. Like, man, sign concert. Do I need this? Yeah, man, it looks good on you, man. The XYZ looks great. Like, come on, man. Hey. Hey. It's a little used, but it don't work. Obviously, it's working for you. Yeah. It's working. So we need to start recruiting out the, out the, you know. And uh, especially if I work there, but I got crazy strong, bro. They probably spit out yeah. six old employees a month. Okay. okay. I mean, you used to be in the parking lot. I went like, you like, you just got fired. You need a job? <laughs> <laughs> you looking for some opportunity? <laughs> uh, what do you call it? Wake up now? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it be one of those things. <laughs> Oh man! Well, look in other news, Beyonce is going on tour, and we got some things to talk about. The things to talk about, I'm sure many people's out there's lives have been impacted. I've been asked for concert tickets more than I've ever been in my life by people who obviously don't understand where I am in the music industry. <laughs> I'm doing all right, but you know what I mean? I ain't, I ain't doing that. I'm not, I'm not connected there. But like, <laughs> and which is interesting though, before I even get into this, this next teaser though, it's crazy how strong Beyonce fans are. Probably should have mentioned this later where we're going to talk about it because people aren't even asking me outside of my girl. People aren't even asking me for tickets actually. They're asking me for the ability to buy tickets. As expensive as they are. Yeah. Like, they just like, I just want the opportunity to buy it. <laughs> That's crazy. That's a different level of, of fandom, bro. I, mean, I feel like I'm in that same boat right now with a different artist, so I get it. Hey, no. hey, exactly. I get a premium just to get the chance. <laughs> yes. Please, man, to put me in the top 100 of the queue. Hey, exactly. <laughs> 100%. Don't kick me out. Please Jeez. don't kick me out. The funnier part, even before you move on, the funnier part is, it is hilarious being in music and being around people who aren't in music when you have to first like break their rose in the glass of like what they think you are. Cause, that, cause people that don't, are in it don't yeah. get it. They just think like, oh, it's all the music industry. So like you all know Beyonce and Future and like Drake. You can get me tickets to this shit. And like the first time you gotta be like, nah, bro, I don't, nah, I ain't nowhere near that. It's like, oh, I thought they look at you different. Like, yeah. like they don't believe you anymore. Like, oh, you know, are you really in music then? Like, you don't know Future? <laughs> you don't know Beyonce? You can't get Beyonce tickets? Uh, so that's just funny. Oh, though. man. That's funny. Uh, how, you know what? That's going to take me too far in a different direction. But that, <laughs> yes, there's a there are plenty of stories of the music friend and the non-music friends. And this is definitely one of those industries where people just assume everything. Matter of fact, it's the equivalent of my mom thinking I can do random tech stuff because I was – like the uh, computer yeah. pro yeah. programming. She was like, oh, Sean, like, I got this virus on my computer. I'm like, man, I write code, bro. She's like, I don't know nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what the hell you're talking about right now. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, something happened at the school. Can you come uh, fix it or whatever? I'm like, nah, man. Yeah. Like, like, I just, this is completely different. <laughs> so, nah, I, I, <laughs> I get where you're coming from. But, Beyonce wants that tax money. That's the, what we got to talk about. Mm. Beyonce wants that tax money, and man, she is genius. Would you give Beyonce all your tax money? Because that is the theory that so many fans have. They say, they say that Beyonce strategically drops her tickets around tax season mm -hmm. so she can get that extra bread that's coming to you. All right? She's saying, hey, if you're getting a refund, you might not be making the best decisions anyway. So... <laughs> 
So you might as well lose it on me. <laughs> and I respect. Get that Hellcat. I respect. What are you saying? Before you get that Hellcat. Before you get that Hellcat. Think about these. Think too. Think about these tickets. And look, it's been consistent. We got these dates written down. Let me see if I can find them real quick. Real quick. Beyonce. She did April twentieth, two thousand seven, for the Beyonce Experience. April twenty fifth. 2008 for the I Am World Tour. The Miss Carter Show World Tour was February 11th, 2013. The Formation World Tour was February 16th, 2016. And the Renaissance World Tour was February 7th, 2023. Okay, February 7th? Yeah, 2023, yes. So she slowly worked her way too closer to tax time. Yeah, no, 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 no. Well, you said start in April? Like April back to February? Yes, April back to February. So, you know, but well, April 15th is like the deadline for taxes. Yeah. So she was right at the end of it. Yeah. Right? And you probably put the word out that it's going to happen and have to buy date. So some people had probably had time to get their refunds because everybody doesn't do their taxes in January. You know what I mean? Yeah, There's that true. range. Yeah. But it probably worked her way up further because it's like, yeah, let me capture more of these people. Yeah, exactly. Like, right? right when they get it. Right when they both get it. 100%. <laughs> and other part of the theory. Which is very much so worth talking about. All right, we're going somewhere with this, people. April just includes tax season. But you bring that bad boy up to February 7th, like this year. As a matter of fact, 2016, let me see. No, 2013, February 11th. 2016, mm-hmm. February 16th. This year, February 7th. Let's see, we're going with this. Yeah. God damn Valentine's Day. That motherfucking <laughs> Valentine's Day. Give me that present. This is my present, boo. You gotta give me this shit, bro. Like for for fucking um like for this. I we don't have to go out to eat. We don't have to get no flowers. Like we we I I know some women who are are making those type of deals. Life like decisions. Man, yeah. Life decisions. It's like okay. <laughs> I get it. I know they're expensive, especially these right here. Come yeah, on out. Yeah. Right? They're making those type of decisions and then foregoing the short term for the long term thinking. You got to respect yeah, that. I respect that. You got to respect that. Yeah. I I have been approached <laughs> <laughs> with similar, similar type of uh, analysis, you know. <laughs> and it's just amazing because, like, when you break that down, though, being serious, the consideration of what your fans are going through at the time is something that more artists should do. Yeah, 100%. Like, they're so worried about my launch, my rollout in and of itself. I wanted to drop on this date, and now I got to work backwards from my rollout and try to sell you this, or I'm going on tour, and now I'm trying to sell you this because this is what I'm trying to make while I'm on tour. But you can structure these things around what's going to make sense for your fans. Like, even when I think about... Tomorrow World, I remember, I feel like they were dropping pretty early in this season, too. Mm-hmm. Like, they would go live, and you can get pre-sales, early sales, all around this time. Right? And then, I feel like Coachella was doing that for a while, too. Maybe, uh the see when they dropped this year. But I, I actually uh, remember when I was more in the festival space, festival, big festivals dropping around this time. Because they were like, fucking with my shit, you know, when I was running it. But I wasn't thinking of doing it during this time. Actually, as a matter of fact, one thing that I was thinking about was, so in Atlanta, you know, September is crazy when it comes to events, especially around music, Music Midtown, Music Fest, A3C was around, all this music stuff, right? And then all the side parties related to it, BET, Wars, all these different things. It was start late August, Go into October. So I was like, ah, right, y'all got that. All right? The first year I did it in August and it, it did well, but that was just like random. It was first one. I wasn't thinking about anything. Then I started to become more strategic. I landed in, I wanted, I thought about January. I'm like, people are too fresh. It's, it's probably too cold. So I ended up like, I think it was like March or something like that, mm-hmm. whatever, early. So it was like before our season started to get back going, people want to be outside, but nobody's doing anything yet. Yeah. Right? 
So we don't have all these events. We don't have all this competition. And I had the advantage at that time, the way I saw it, because it was an indoor festival, right? And promoted that way. That was part of how I came up with the concept or whatever. Outside of me being having like a big ass facility. And I was like, this ain't a party. I wanted to just a little party. Yeah. And I was like, and I'm like, can't fill nobody up. This party, I got to call it a festival. So <laughs> more people want to come. <laughs> but like, so it being indoors allowed me that little space. Right. And I was, all of that was thick based on thinking though, around what are people doing at this time? What are people doing at this time? It's a smaller event. I'm running this shit all out of my pockets. How can we fill in? So that same concept, thinking about what my fans or the people I want to go uh, are going through at that time in their life, that, especially at that time, they had to think about school, all that stuff, right? So I wasn't big on the summer because a lot of our people were, uh, we were targeting colleges, were like pretty young people and people were going back home, right? So we were losing a lot of that stuff. So we weren't doing summer. All that stuff is something that any artist can keep in mind, whether I mean, I haven't done it for merch. or I'm sure there's a way that applies to your merch strategy, right? And the crazy part about it, like some people might say, well, when's a good time? We don't know. Because yeah. it's your fan base. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there's something different for every single fan base. Like, if you're older, there might be things, oh, this position this as a night out with your husband or your wife or whatever, and it applies a little differently because it's, you know, couples might just be looking for a, a lit night out. Kind of like that's how that Jeezy event. That's partially how it worked. I do. You remember? I was trying to get in that one. I do remember. You know what I mean? And I, my whole thing was, oh, bro, this is date night. I'm gonna win it always. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna win. I'm gonna get the networking. I'm gonna have everything going just from that one thing, right? And that's how you can get um, you can charge more and fancier, you know, setup yeah. plays. We had just seen Jeezy in October, you right? Know, one music fest? Yeah, one for music fest, okay, yeah. right? What was going to be the difference? You were going to be in a suit. I was going to be in a suit. Shawty was going to be in a dress. <laughs> you know what I mean? And there going to be other people in suits and dresses. I mean, you get to put your makeup on, girl. Go ahead and do that. Go ahead and take the pictures. Get the face, face beat. It's a good night. So all that, that's a certain demographic, right? Yeah. That, yeah. that can win off of that type of thing specifically. And, you know, depend. There's all these other demographics. So I, you know, we could, we could probably just make one as a case study or whatever and choose a different artist. But there's so many little details to consider about what your your people like to do and what their interests are that I feel like most artists don't consider. And but I've known a few people that actually do a really good job of that. Whether it's the artist or even the party scene from you know, that I used to be in. Those people, like, I, I always remember those people. I wasn't thinking about it this way to the Beyonce shit, but you remember those people because they think just a little bit different. It's like them small details that other people aren't considering. Yeah, right. It's like the, uh, like the party promoters that throw like MLK. <laughs> you know, like K parties, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. cultural, cultural context cultural and cultural relevancy right yeah they know hey people are feeling this way around this event these are the emotions and things i'm gonna lean on to get you to come that's a fact come get this casamigos but yeah i mean i think that goes back to the point we always make of like why artists should be actively talking to their fans right because this is a thing that i think is a lot easier to see when you're small you know what i'm saying like you can kind of like read the room pretty quickly or like you more than likely know of these things going on but like the bigger you get like you really do have to kind of lean on your fan base to give you that information, either because you know you start being a lot more removed from things like that, yep. or you just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like new shit comes up that creates different moments of cultural relevancy all the time. We don't always all know about it, you know. But it's like if you're talking to your audience and your audience can say like, "Hey, man, no, nah, don't do that show in July because Trippy Red just announced his tour yesterday, and if I got to pick between you and Trippy Red." I'm going Trippy Red, you know what I'm saying? So that's yeah, like, oh. You're not there yet. Yeah, exactly. Like, thank you for that, fan. I didn't know Trippy Red had a tour coming out. Pretty, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, that, I think that's what it always boils down to. Like, fans will let you know if they see other culturally relevant things you should be paying attention to or not. Um, you as yourself, you as an artist or team, yeah, should be actively trying to figure out as much of it as you can. Like, holidays to me are a given. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can literally sit down, look at a calendar, Look at all the major holidays coming up. They're like, all right, which one of these could I realistically take advantage of with my fan base? All right, my fan base, 
don't fuck with, I don't know, Thanksgiving. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not doing nothing with it. I'll yeah. throw, throw out some good. <laughs> yeah, go with it. <laughs> but I know my fans all, you know what I'm saying, in love or and or hate the other. So I'm going to take advantage of Valentine's Day in a really unique way, right? So I think yeah. holidays are like a really easy start. Then from there, it kind of becomes like, you know, things that culturally pertain to the group you're a part of. You know, things are like you have to be in that group to even know. You know what I'm saying? Like holidays, events, moments. Kind of like you mentioned with um like like the the party scene here in, in you know what I'm saying, in the summer. Like if you're the type of person like partying amongst like the college girl, like you know that. You know what I'm saying? If you're not that type of person, shit probably feel the same. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It feels exactly the same as, as any other week. But like you in that, a person throwing those type of parties, we need to know that shit. Hey, yep. school is out May 15th. All these niggas at home by May 18th. I can't throw another party between May and whatever, right? So I I, I agree with you 100%. And I, like I said, I think that that back and forth between the artist and fan is completely undervalued because of that. Because like they will literally tell you, hey, this is the right time to try to get me to spend money. And yep. to your point, yep. artists would be like, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. My rollout's in this month. And it's like, well, I ain't got no money then. Or this thing that is bigger than you and to me, is happening and I'm gonna choose, hey, I got a family vacation coming up during this time. Like I said, ex such and such got a concert coming up. Hey bro, I graduate. Hey, prom is around the time. I, I once heard an artist talk about it on his live, bro. He was like, you niggas spending all this money in April. And one of his fans was like, cause it's prom time, bro. We gotta get suited up. And it's like, oh, I never thought that's a damn, it is prom. This will be a terrible time to try to sell to your 17 year old fans who just stacked up $500 for a tuxedo. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like. All that mom money is going towards that right Exactly, now. bro. All the mom money burnt out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. At least until graduation. They got another, they got one more time of mom money with graduation. Maybe if you hit them at graduation, you know what I'm saying? You could come up. Or this is just kind of candid me. If I was an artist with a high school fan base, I would, what, are, what are the flowers that, that they make you put on? Your okay. Oh, is that what it's called? The one that make you like put on like. The girl's like wrist or dress or something. You know what I'm talking about? Like, it's like I know a, what you're talking about. Yeah. If I was an artist, bro, and I'm my fan base. Nah. I don't know what it's called. Let's just say this is like a flower thing. Yeah. If I was an artist, bro, my demographic was mainly high school. I would sell those around for a long time, bro. Branded one of those. Somebody would buy that shit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think like just becoming culturally aware of like what's important to your fans. You know what I'm saying? From all these different angles will help you figure out when does it make sense to try to make money? When does it make sense to just give value? Stay away from making money, and will give you like unique product ideas that you yep. wouldn't be able to do throughout the year. Like I said, Valentine's Day is coming up. Every artist right now can make Valentine's Day cards and sell them and get away with it, and nobody will bat it out. Nobody would think it's weird. Yeah. Three months from now, you you selling cards. They're like, what are you Hallmark, bro? Like, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, when did you start doing this? So, yeah, I don't know, man. I feel like uh, I feel like it just it just all the roles that I pay with gold on, on paying attention to that side. One hundred percent, one hundred percent, bro. And I like the example of saying, "Yo, don't put your concert tickets on sale right now because should be red." I'm gonna pay for trippy mm -hmm. because it helps you understand clearly. I want to buy this from you, mm -hmm. however, right? <laughs> put me in a hard place. You put me in a hard place. And I'm gonna go with him. And using that example, there's another fan base, Beyonce's, for example. They don't care when trippy drop. Yeah. <laughs> for the most part, right? So it, it makes it clear how specific it is. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> uh I, I hate laughing at this, but I know you've had this type of question before. Oh. There's been artists, independent artists. That I know for a fact have asked you this because they've asked me this. Just starting out, dropping a project and saying, "Hey man, do you think I should drop my project this Friday?" Because uh, I heard Drake dropping his project, and it's like <laughs> well, nobody cares, but nobody, nobody knows. That's nobody true. cares. Nobody cares, bro. And 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 in that way, especially because. Again, it's something that's not necessarily relevant to you. It, just because Drake is big and you like Drake doesn't mean your fans necessarily like Drake. And, yeah. and that's part of it, right? It's like the Beyonce Trippy Red example. A lot of these people who've asked that weren't even necessarily making Drake complimentary music. I'm like, I know you're hearing that big artists are playing this game with each other, but you're in a different space, Yeah. right? 
best when they're so big and even if they seem kind of different, they're so big, there's it's so overlap. And they're trying to own a moment in media, which is a completely different game. Yeah. And like at that level, it's like all those artists, even if they're in different genres, they're all in like the pop bucket. You know what I'm saying? So like, like I said, even if you're here and I'm here, we still are competing in yeah. one way or another. Bro, Lil, who, whatever, with your 200,000 monthly listeners, brother, they don't care. It doesn't matter. It don't matter, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, because... To your point, like, like I said, I think a lot of these arguments are stemmed from the the uh, stereotype of the stupid fan. Like I've talked about that before, but I hate I hate that stereotype. But fans are just these, these dumbasses who only listen to one album a day. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like they only have the capacity for thirty minutes of music a day, and then they on to that TikTok. I, I hate that. Music. See, and that was really drawn. It seemed like there was some realism for that, but it wasn't. Right? You know how they say it's. Uh, what is it? It's cause, not effect. I think that's what I'm looking for. Or or not causation. So basically, you can have a similar result, and this is happening at the same time, but that doesn't mean that that's the reason it happened. Yeah. Right? So, yes, fans at the same time of the old album system and project system were not listening to a whole lot of music, a whole lot of different things. But the reality was not necessarily fans didn't have the capacity to listen to a lot of music. Not that they didn't have the capacity to listen long and to different varieties. It was, they didn't have the, the capacity. Matter of fact, they didn't have the cash, right? The decision-making, the barrier to entry to listen to a lot of music was way different. Yeah. Right? So, they had that theory and it rang true as long as the thing that actually had an impact was true. Yeah. All right. And that's access. All right. Now we know it's like, Hey, you turn on the computer, you get playing music for free. And then if you want a better organized experience, you pay for it, a DSP. No barrier to entry. I'm going to listen to whatever I want to. All right. Now we got <laughs> trouble getting fans to only focus on one thing, right? Yeah. But it's the opposite. So yeah, no, nah, the, the stupid fan thing is is something somewhat derived from that. And the problem with that is fans are smarter than other ever because not only are they consuming more music and more in tune with um release schedules. the release schedules, yeah. the marketing, they are even starting to understand just the general business in the back end to our favor, right? Because then they know that you're in a bad deal, a good deal. Like they're starting to care about things like that. Yeah. So yeah. You know, fans are far from dumb these days. Yeah. Yeah. So it, 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 things like it, I always feel like that's the basis of it. But whenever I do get that question, mm -hmm. I tell them, well, really paint, pointing back to the point you made, like, hey, like, do you feel like your fans like this type of music? They say, no. And it's like, all right, why do you care? They say, yes. I'm like, okay, all right. So your fans do like Drake. It's like, now, do you think your fans like you? Some, some of them, it's a hard question to answer, bro. Some of them don't know, bro. Are they fans, though? Yeah, first of all, they're fans. They're fans that are, I mean, I know I know if I say what I'm going to say, you're going to say, are they fans of they don't fuck with you, blah, but they're fans that don't fuck with they, they favorite artists, bro. I, you, they be in the comments bullying these motherfuckers. They be harassing them at shows i just seen a video of like um i think destroy lonely there's an upcoming rapper versus i'm like fucking with him in one of his shows it's like the, it's like his fourth time in like the last month and a half or two months of somebody just harassing his fans yeah. harassing him at shows so i don't know man i think they can not like you i think they can like your music and not like you there could be weird relationships yeah. with fans because i know somebody who is a beyonce fan for the longest and i remember in college we were in college and I told her the new Beyonce project was out. I don't remember what project it was, but I was like, yeah, this new Beyonce project just dropped. I know you were super Beyonce fan. Do you gonna buy this new album or whatever? Mm -hmm. And her whole thing was Beyonce has enough money. I'm not going to buy it. She was so serious. So those fans are the worst. It was so those weird to me. I really yeah. had nothing to say because yeah. she was like the biggest Beyonce fan I knew in the world. It was crazy to the point it was weird sometimes. And when I said that and then she said that, I thought she was joking and she was serious. And I was like, whoa, this is, I don't know what to do. Yeah, bro. Some fans really feel like, hey, I've already liberated you from 
this hell that is regular life. I'm not supporting you. <laughs> I'm not supporting you anymore. Hey, it's crazy, bro. So I'm saying they don't really like these artists, bro. When they say shit like that, they don't <laughs> really like these artists. Cause like, I don't know, bro. It's like I, I can't even think of nothing else to equate it to. It's like if you really like this person and want them to do good, you want to put a ceiling on like how far you want them to go. You know? Cause I know like the mm -hmm. underground, the underground rap yeah. community is is pretty notorious for being like that, right? That, yeah. you know what I'm saying like, hey, we support you to right about here, and then once you crack here, hey, bro, you on your own. Now you fighting with the weekend and tell us what's when we not back and you up no more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like. Yeah. Yeah, they basically damn and do that shit. No, the underground community still supports the heat, but they, they, they felt like it was about to at one point. We'll see how far he goes. Yeah, sometimes yeah. Problem, yeah. yeah, we gotta see, but like they always do that. But yeah, so that's why I I, I asked him like, yo, do you think your fans like you? Okay, and you know, people to your point, that they, they usually sound like a weird question. I'm like, yeah, bro, I think my fans like me. You know, for real, when you say that, yo, they DM me all the time. They message me. They always hit me blah blah blah. And I'm like, all right, great, you will be fine. <laughs> There's 24 hours in a day. This Drake album is 52 minutes. You know what I'm saying? I mean, they still got 23 hours and eight minutes of time to put towards you. And yeah. if they really like you like you think they do, you will get listened to sometime between Friday and Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to wait your turn. It's like a cue, bro. Like, I know when I listen to the music, it's like a cue. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I hear who am I the most excited about first and then second most excited. And then, you know, after around like the third or fourth listen, I'm just like, it's like a checklist. Like, I'm just going through listening to people. Like, oh, I see this artist dropped the song. I wasn't really that excited, but I fucked with him. Let me go see what it's about. Oh, this person dropped the song. I didn't even know. Let me go check that out. So, you know, people are going to always prioritize what's most important to them. So, if you're not someone's top priority, you're just not someone's top priority. But that doesn't mean that you will not get any action overall. <laughs> it's the not getting any action part, bro, that got me rolling. <laughs> that was like, just be on the side waiting for them to finish. I mean, pretty much, bro. <laughs> pretty much. So, <laughs> like, you done with that Drake album yet? Yeah, nah, nah, I was gonna give it another listen. Now I was gonna give it out of you. you know, so I heard something on the third It's like being in a bitch press, bro, just waiting for the nigga to get up. <laughs> so that man having, having the lift of his life, you know what I'm saying? He just waiting to get started. That's, that's exactly what it's like, but it's like, when you at a certain position, like, that's just the reality of it, bro. Yeah. Like, people aren't, like, there are gonna be small portions of your fans that, are just as excited about your release as they will be about a Drake release or a Travis Scott. And you know, we talked about that. Like, like the lamb, the, not the lamb, but the line between fandom um, for a fan of ours is, is, is typically the same, bro. Like, if I like you, in my head, you are no different than this other big artist that I like. You know, give or take, I maybe know some details about you that maybe yeah, yeah. look at you a little differently, but like, the way I feel is exactly the same for both of you, you know what I'm saying, in, in one way or another. Um, so I, I do think that. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, like, it, it's just the reality. If I don't like you enough to where you are high priority, but I do like you, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm going to get to you. You're just not going to be first or second or third, you know what I'm saying? Depending on what came out. It's like, um, who's the, what's the last couple projects that came out of this It's It's like the Taylor Swift, Drake, Metro Boom, and Lon that happened in like you know, a couple weeks, right? All right? Taylor Swift album, even though it wasn't the same day, wasn't the same day. It might be a little bit of a different argument. But... Nothing about that Drake momentum stopped me from listening to Metro Boomin. I'm pretty sure Drake's momentum didn't stop Taylor Swift fans from going back. <laughs> they probably woke up that day, <laughs> looked at their Spotify release, like, oh, Drake dropped some shit. I'm going to go listen to the Taylor Swift album for the 50th time, yeah. you know what I'm saying, this month. So it's like, it's it's, me. So it's like they like you enough and, and you are embedded enough. Like People will make the time for you, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That's why I, I, that question, to me, always – Let's me know where the artist is at in their career because I feel like artists have been a fan base for a while and like they know that and they get that. You know what I'm right. saying? Because like you start to see artists being in the game for a minute, they start doing whatever they want to do, releasing shit at weird times, weird days. You know what I'm saying? Because like they have kind of realized that okay, if these people really rock with me. They gonna be here no matter kind of how I string it. It's usually the, the newer artists that haven't like really built a base yet that ask that question. And mm -hmm. that's I'm like, bro, like nobody cares, bro. Like, yeah. So this shit come out next Friday? Yeah, I right, bet. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, hey, well, look, we want to stay on Beyonce. Oh, yeah. Because we got another thing to talk about with her. And look, it's a true case study. This is real marketing happening right before your eyes. Yeah. And people, are, people are getting tricked by these genius actions. I actually had to break my trainer's innocence. He didn't know how this shit really worked. And I, I let him know how we really finesse these normal citizens out here with our marketing. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> this text chat on the shade room, I'm not going to read through all of it, 
But no, if you're looking at the screen or if you're listening, I'll just ex- explain. So they got a little text thread between, you know, man and a woman, I assume. Babe, with all these little cry faces or like, you know, pouty faces. The person responds, yeah, babe, I love you. Happy face, da, da, da. I don't know what that says. Oh, what's going on? Oh, love you too. What's going on? Other person says, babe, I really want to go to the B concert. It's in July and pre-sale for tickets 216. <laughs> oh, I got to go back to this. I have been, I have been on February 16th. You don't have to get me a Valentine's Day gift or a B-Day gift. I just want to see Beyonce, please. Now, first of all, the problem is that's a lot at the time. Because by the time the birthday come around, they forget about that shit, bro. Yeah, they forget about that shit. That shit ain't right. Exactly. Facts. <laughs> Facts. Keep and a video. Video says we count. Yes. <laughs> no, I definitely make it to I would definitely make it to the count. Now, got all, they drop all these dates and then circle Nashville, Tennessee, where the concert's going to be, because apparently that's where they are. And the buddy responds, come on now. We agreed to not spend money on entertainment until we save enough for our house we have been saving for months can't do that babe sorry and then they go on and on and on where they're going back and forth and then babes the girl's like hey i'm gonna spend the money anyway basically yeah and he's like yo, out savings. right taking money out of savings he's like yo you on which i think she said i i actually probably attributed thousand a thousand dollars towards like so yeah he was like ah, actually it was like seven hundred dollars <laughs> so it started going that way now why is this important it's beautiful to see a couple conversing over your concert tickets like this and wondering oh i got the screen not looking right let me change that up we're not used to this setup it's, it's beautiful to see these kind of, kind of conversations happening and we know for a fact these type of conversations are actually happening about beyonce's concert yeah yeah. How is this here? Why is this here, though? This shit is fake. This is what we do right here. Yeah. This is what you should do, right? <laughs> Think. Be creative. This text thread is 100%, bro. I, I don't know for sure in terms of I know who did it, how they did it, when they did it, but I damn near actually know how they did it. But you know what I mean? Like, this is what we do, right? This is how we market things. Why is this brilliant? Why is it beautiful? One. Shawty is tripping in this thread. What does that mean? Well, since Shawty's tripping, people gonna talk about Shawty tripping. Mm-hmm. People gonna argue. Oh my God, she's being so responsible. I'm gonna get rid of him. I mean, he should get rid of her. Like she got a good man saving for a house, and she gonna get rid of a house for Beyonce. You know, all the super logical people. They're so smart, but they're not smart enough to know that they are actually getting drawn into <laughs> a fake marketing scheme. You know. What I'm saying? <laughs> Like, this is what we're doing. We're, 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 we're helping you waste your energy so we can go viral. So the way this position is going to help everything go viral because of the argument. People are going to take pick sides, right? Mm-hmm. Or just be like, yo, this is crazy. Got to share it, right? Mm-hmm. All right, we know that. Now, then doing it looking like an authentic text thread. Come on, all right? That's also what we do. That's also what we've done multiple times, all right? Okay. And it should still work. Should be work. And it's never not going. <laughs> a, th- a text thread ain't never not. Ain't not. It's just it just is what it is. Cause harder to debunk a text thread. It's hard to debunk. It's harder to debunk, bro. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Like you do like that. That's the, to me. That's the signs, bro. The the name and number. Which yeah, you could argue the blood out for the internet, but it's like no, nah, bro. They do it in a way where like you can't trace this back to a real person. Right. Right. Hey, but what makes this beautiful though, and why I respect, and you know. Is someone who at least knows what they're doing, right? Is what does this say? Because it's too far away. Queen of accountability at Queen of accountability. That's wow. the Instagram page apparently that I got pulled from. Yeah. So what do we do? We move up the chain. Yep. And it happens in not just music. Actually, it happens in all forms of news. You start on the small source, and then so it could appear more credible, it gets pulled. Mm-hmm. To, to bigger sources because the bigger sources have to appear more credible. Yeah. So it's better and easier for them to say, I got it pulled from this smaller account. So if it is wrong, then I don't face all of the backlash. And also it looks more realistic yeah. for it not to just be on my account. Yeah, exactly. Right? I, I was going to say that. Like it makes it look more realistic because it, it's like you watch it going viral. Like, hey, I saw this on this smaller page. 
in the morning and by that night, I saw it on Shade Room. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, yeah. I, I can assume that all oh, this shit started moving and getting traction. This is why the Shade Room posted. Crazy, bro. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> I love it because you pat yourself on the back right now. <laughs> That's what's really happening. <laughs> But these, this is this is the stuff that happens, bro. Yeah, yeah, and it goes back to the point you were just making about paying attention to like what cultural things your audience is paying attention to. Because, yes. like I said, there's the conversation of our Beyonce tickets too expensive happening. Mm-hmm. Great, easy to take off that. Because to me, this is an extreme version of that joke. Like, oh, you you be willing to give up your husband, your house for Beyonce tickets? But right? it seems like an extreme version of that joke, right? So. This is happening. Valentine's Day has come up. Valentine's Day was mentioned in right? Yep. Valentine's Day is coming up. Um, this whole like 50 50 relationship, who, baby, what conversation has been happening on social media for months? You know what I'm saying? But it's all right in that. You know what I'm saying? This hit both sides of that. I mean, man's you know? world. It yeah. is, it's, it's all world. Yep. Yeah. That is that conversation. This shit going to be on fresh and fit in like a week. I promise you, bro. That's going to be something like that. It's going to be on like a week, bro. Hey. So, <laughs> you know what? You talked about the Valentine's Day mention. Yeah. That's one of the things that, like, started going too far for me. You know what I mean? But it's also genius at the same time because even as it gets debunked, you're still getting all the information in people's heads. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So if you look at this shit, okay, so concerts in July, whatever, pre-sale for tickets are February 16th. Bam. You put that in people's mind who don't necessarily already know or need the reminder, right? What's another thing? Put the out, dates, bro. They, they put the show dates on there. Yes, they put the show dates on there and then circle <laughs> her date. I'm like, bro, y'all are y'all are putting it all out there, <laughs> leaving nothing to. So this is this is the for no, not formation. This is the flyer. Yeah, this is the ad. Yes, it's it's the straight up yeah. ad, right? If you think about it, like how you had the flyer with all the dates and all the information, this is literally the flyer, except yeah. you broke down the flyer into a text thread yeah. and delivered the information real slick. You know, I, I I love it, man. The flyer, let's see if they did any, uh, anything else in there. Let me see. Uh, oh, one. Also, you gave people the argument to say, hey, let's not do Valentine's Day. Let's or, Beyonce, I think, yeah. yeah, let's barter our birthday. You gave them an approach to use yeah, to yeah. get what they need. We've done that before in certain instances, not for the artist stuff, but for other instances, all right? Working with some other B2B, like the music marketer stuff. Hey, bro, you need to go get some clients. You get some clients and you tell them about what you're about to get into, and then you'll be able to help them out. Yeah. Then, you know what I mean? Like, we've used the same argument. Damn. But that's. But that's also when I knew it was fake. Like, cause like, like to your point, I don't know any if too many women that would give up birthday and Valentine's Day. Yeah, well, that, like that's a hard start. Yeah, she yeah. should have started <laughs> with Valentine's Day, and then they throw in birthday as a part of like he throws it in, and they start yeah. to negotiate. Yeah, exactly. Like, that would have been gate, yeah with birthday, bro. No. Coming out the gate. No. Yeah, that's that that's tough. I don't know no woman giving up her birthday for Beyonce. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. If you out there, you know, leave a comment. But let me see. I don't believe I ain't believe that. So it's a no when the tickets go on sale, they won't last long. See, you let people know these things ain't gonna last long. Scarcity is out there. She will be sold out in hours. I'm begging you, you're still saying no. <laughs> First of all, the the gall. The gall. Uh, what, was, what else did she say? Wait, some of the money is mine. Oh yeah, that's when I get into that. That's when they started to make that argument. Yeah. See, they gonna break up some relationships with shit like this, <laughs> giving all these ideas. <laughs> I'm very serious. When I can, when can I pick it up? Like, why is she picking up the money? Actually, see, that's so. This was also when it became out. Come on, if y'all are a couple at this point, if there's either a joint account. Somebody got cash up. Hey, I may maybe they somebody got cash up. Dirty money. Sale, at least it might be dirty money only. Wait, so you're breaking up with me for asking? Oh, so also they went too far from doing an immediate breakup. Yeah, they shouldn't have did that. Yeah, I, I, that I felt was too much. Yeah, everything else, you know, I could almost get away with, and say that was an overzealous fan, except for the birthday and Valentine's Day out the jump. And but yeah, that right there, the the breakup that fast. Come on now, yeah. come on now, you you ain't breaking up with somebody that fast. That you raising money or saving money for a house with. Unless he was already, already sick of her. 
and I less, he, right? He was looking Which forward. I do also understand. It probably does happen. I I know someone. <laughs> I, I I got someone older in my life. Um, she was like an auntie to me when I was younger, and the story was always she broke up with her husband, who I never met. I never met the husband, but I know. Uh, her daughter was like, you know, kind of like a sister-ish to me, and, and she was like a, a auntie to me. They broke up over some ground beef. Hmm. Okay. Right? All right. And that shit always sounded crazy to crazier to me. And, you know, at the time as a kid, it was kind of funny because you were a heavier set woman too. So I'm just thinking about fighting over food. Right? It was just like over ground beef, that serious? That that, you know, that's where it was as a kid, bro. Right? That's what I was thinking. But as you get older, you get in enough relationship. <laughs> it wasn't just a motherfucking ground beef, bro. Yeah. It was representative of something. See, she came home. This nigga hadn't been working. You know, this nigga ain't really been doing shit. He on the couch. And I come home ready to eat you some ground beef and you done ate all the motherfucking ground beef. <laughs> I do get that. I get it. I get it. You know what I'm saying? So that's what the look. That's the only scenario where that could be real. If there was a little bit of backstory, okay, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. <laughs> but that's a true story, but I, I, I didn't get it until I got older. I was like, you know what? I just rethought. You know how sometimes you, for some reason, yeah. you look stuff and just connect. And you're like, I ain't know this shit in 20 years. But I get it now. Yeah. This nigga could have bought some chips and made some nachos. Bro, right. some, some fair. Bro, right. didn't make me nothing. Exactly. <laughs> hey. Hey, I feel like I'm going all four. <laughs> that shit be building up, bro. It be building up. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was the unrealistic part. But the rest of it, the rest of it is pretty genius. I would love to know the, the, the person or people that, you know, put this up and came with that idea. Bro, I love it. I I, I love it. Just the, just the fact to do it, even though, you know, There'll be people like us who recognize it and some other people, you know, who are socially savvy or then you just got the skeptics who happen to be wrong. I mean, who happen to be right every once in a while because they skeptical of enough. <laughs> Regardless, you, you still get all the comments, yeah. right? You still go viral. You still make the wave. So I applaud it and I love it. Now, the interesting thing is so this is projected to be Beyonce's highest grossing tour around three hundred million dollars, right? Yeah, yeah, good money, good money. Now, the way they're approaching it, I love, and we were just talking about this earlier, because she started on the European world tour. Mm -hmm. Now, after she dropped and released these dates, there's been new dates that got added. Why? Because Atlanta showed a high demand. I think it was Toronto showed a high demand. There were like four, maybe six cities that showed a really high demand, so they added a second date. This goes back to reading your fans, paying attention to your fans, mm -hmm. right? And wanting to be in the man, but also not wanting to be ass out if not enough people show up. Even at this level, because yes, it's Beyonce, you know she has a lot of fans, but now you're translating that a lot of fans to stadiums, it looks different, right? Yeah. You went from a small room to a big room that 100 people don't feel the space. It's, it's a little cold, I can feel the, the AC in this room, yeah. right? So, yes, yeah, she's doing that at that level, but that's actually something that translates all the way down. Like, we talk a lot about things that bigger artists are doing that you probably shouldn't be paying attention to. That's something that literally, you know, artists that I know with 500 fans, 2,000 fans are doing where, hey, I'm going to this city. And you just let them know, I'm going to this city. I'm about to do a tour or a show in New York and maybe, I don't know, Philadelphia. Now those people in that space know that you're on the Northeast and you just let them tell you if it's worth going to another city. Mm -hmm. Like, oh man, how come you don't come to Newark, New Jersey outside of the crime? Well, let me know. Do you want me to go to Newark, New Jersey? Like, if y'all have enough of them and then maybe I'll drop a little application or or whatever, right? Because it depends on who you are in your system. So maybe I, I, I'm connected enough with a promoter to kind of test it out full in that way and to see how many tickets uh, pay out. That's a very possible thing. And advertising your concert or your tour 
is actually one of the best ways to continue to fill those dates and, mm-hmm. and do that test. Like, hey, I'm going to this, I'm going to that. Because people will start to say, why are you not coming to me? And they'll start to reveal themselves, the ones who care enough. And then it's up to you to say, hey, bro, look, you need to tell your friends to also let me know because I can't just go for you. Or if you were a real fan, you'll go recruit and turn other people into fans. Because honestly, bro, right now it's only you. <laughs> You're the only one in Tulsa that want me to come through. So I can't really justify it. So you might have to fly out to New York or whatever. So it's a real method that applies to everybody. And it's just nice and dope to see it done at even the highest level. Yeah, yeah. Because to me, it's much better than the whole not doing that and then trying to trick people with the, the sold out sign. At the end of it. Yeah. Hey, look, bro. They walk in to me like, I thought she was sold out. I said, a seat right there, a seat right there, a seat right there. <laughs> bruh, bruh. And remember, they start getting hit with it. I think this is a better way to handle it than they personally discovered because if you think about, you know, maybe five years ago now, there were a lot of stars that were having concerts take place and they weren't filling out. Yeah. Like I remember it, maybe Beyonce was involved, but I know Jay-Z was involved in at least one of those things. So then you have to drop ticket prices and figure out a way to finesse your dropping of ticket prices without creating a perception that you couldn't sell it out. Mm-hmm. Right? And that becomes a whole game to chase. So especially when you're at a level like Beyonce, you know, there's only, there's you can only lose by trying to create another show that doesn't sell out in that way. Because mm-hmm. she already got the money. It's not like she's like going, I need to just go for every little dime in that regard. My perception is actually more important. So I need to make sure that it's going to be sold out before I do it. If I end up trying to backtrack, I think Nicki Minaj was involved in one of these like type of instances that uh, about five, six years ago. But yeah, if I have to end up backtracking or finesse in some way and create that argument, it's just not going to be a good look. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, yeah. Right. And, and until we go back, I know we had a past episode we talked about letting fans be a part of like planning your shit, being a part of your life. And to me, this falls in that same place. Here's another low risk way where I can make you feel a part of the operation without really mm. letting you like yeah. ruin anything. You know what I'm saying? Like you said, if it's enough for y'all to speak up, I go. If it's enough of y'all that don't speak up, I don't go. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But at least I yeah. heard you and I took what you said into consideration. So yep. that to me is always like cool to see how bigger artists like work that into their whole process. Cause I know it's hard, it's hard and hard to do that. You know what I'm saying? The, the bigger and bigger you get. But it is always cool to see like how they kind of put that together. Thanks. But yeah, she got a second date in Atlanta? She got two dates in Atlanta? Two dates in Atlanta now. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's a chance. There, there, there's a chance. Man, when <laughs> tickets going to sell? February 16th? What's the day? Wow, my phone, my phone. Or it's gonna drop the bag, y'all. I don't wanna see if I got some connections in high places. Yeah, see how high they go. Yeah, I, do. I, mean, I ain't telling nobody if I do. No, nah, bro, never yeah, do I ain't, that. I ain't telling nobody. Never do that. You know, I mean, somebody might see the pictures though that you were in there. Yeah, weeks later. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when it's too late. Oh, he's saying, you know, okay, you okay. I ain't telling nobody. You talking about just ahead of time so people don't get up on you. Okay, I got you. Yeah, bro. I just I would just go to a Beyonce concert by myself. Hundred percent. Hey, yeah. Easy. It's a it's an experience. It's a, it's a box to check. That's what I'm saying, man. Yeah. Like hey, this kids. first one in five years. I mean, I might not get another one for another to, to 2028. 20, right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> hey, yeah. Kids, I was at this Beyonce concert. Well, what was mommy doing? So I met your mother. Hey. Hopefully. Don't yeah. do that. that. <laughs> I your mother, hopefully. If not, then I'm going to tell them to mind their business and go to bed. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It's perfect time. Anyway. <laughs> Into marketing mistakes. Everybody's made marketing mistakes. Everybody. But I think you're going to be very, 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 very interested to hear some of the other marketing mistakes. Or at the very least, if you haven't made crazy marketing mistakes when it comes to music, you're probably lying, mm. all right? Or you maybe just don't take any kind of risk at all. Yeah, so you ain't did nothing yet. Yeah, you ain't really did nothing. But there's a lot you can learn from the market mistakes that others have taken. So I appreciate the members of Brand Man Network for sharing some of the market mistakes. And I appreciate Damian White for coming up with this question in the first place. Now, 
If you don't know what Brandman Network is, Brandman Network is a free space. So brandmannetwork.com, go ahead there. And that's where we drop all of our strategies that we use in our agency for free. Check it out, brandmannetwork.com. Now, have you made any marketing mistakes? Paid any shady promoters? Got bots? When you thought you were getting fans or anything in between, let's share some of the mistakes we've made so we can all learn from them. Again, great topic, Damian White. And Damian said, I'll start. I had no idea how radio worked back in 2015. So I sold a bunch of my stuff to get money for a ter terrible radio slot. I didn't even have a music video. Song wasn't registered with ASCAP BMI. And I was not on social media. The quote unquote promoter Never gave me a heads up that it was a bad idea until after my campaign was over. I gained nothing and lost a lot due to not doing my research first. Well, you did gain the perspective to do your <laughs> research first. And I knew you were about to say the that. lesson as a whole. Hey, man, it is what it is, right? <laughs> right, you're right. Lesson is a lesson. A lesson learned. <laughs> it might have been expensive, but you got it. As long as you got it. And it seems like you got it. Now, you know, this is a big thing that you mentioned. The promoter didn't let them know it was a bad idea until after the campaign was over. Now, a lot of people do default to, hey, look, it's your money. It's your money. I'm just providing a service. I don't know anything about your team, your lifestyle, the rest of your desires. They don't have nothing to do with me. So that's why it is up to you to know more. All right. Do your research. Mm -hmm. I'm doing this type of campaign. What else needs to be in place to make this type of campaign valuable? And many artist right and people in general think that the campaign itself right is the value mm -hmm. it should be the thing creating the value and that's where they get messed up oh i'm going to do this on radio and the radio campaign specifically is going to do everything else when usually every type of campaign has some type of foundation that needs to be set for it to be mm -hmm. you know valuable so to not only take that lesson that you just took in terms of whatever's needed for the radio campaign, that foundation idea, you all go different for each type of campaign applies to every type of campaign. Mm -hmm. Now, continuing on, Dion McWilliams said, I got kicked off of that piff. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that just sounds crazy, bro. <laughs> I got kicked off of that pill for using a third party marketer that was using a bot, mm -hmm. then had some YouTube views taken from you for the same reason early in the game. Valuable lessons learned. Deami Williams, thank you. You are a soldier. That is hilarious, man. You know, that pill was going down like that. Bro. Yeah, I didn't know they were that protective and real. I, I, I need to correct my opinion of them. You know what I mean? Y'all, y'all, y'all. More astute than I thought. Keith Kenneth Francis says, my main marketing mistake has been inconsistency. I've done numerous campaigns in which I've spent thousands via toned in Google ads, Facebook ads, playlist push, etc. Definitely keep a running budget for campaign ads that are successful and converting. You might have to break this down. What he means by this. By doing so, time and resources are not wasted by having the momentum slowed, forcing you to start from ground zero every time before making any headway. Lastly, try not to get shadow banned, blacklisted from social media platforms, although it's very hard to prevent that once you are and are given no reason as to why this sounds like this happened to them. <laughs> I had, I've had to create multiple Facebook and Instagram pages which have little to no engagement and also got a ban from running ads on there. Bro, what you doing, dog? <laughs> so now we have to, <laughs> so now I have to pay a premium via a third party like toned in and should and should I ever want to grow again using ads? So I gotta use ads just to grow. That's like the only way I, I can grow. You can't use no organic content. But he's saying it's third party people like you know, like Sony you can run ads through there. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm saying like he has to, oh yeah, not only does he have to run ads, he has to do it through third party people. Crazy. Now I stick to going live on Reddit. I didn't know you can go live on Reddit. Yeah. Dang, that's crazy. Although I had a similar issue with <laughs> Doug, <Duh>, bro. <really. laughs> and had to create a new account and grow again to use our pan network. I don't know what that is. And I also maximized my Google ads. Hope this helped. 
Bro, Ken, it sounds like what you should be doing is using OnlyFans. Well, that's the only type of thing I can think that's got you banned over and over again off all these platforms, bro. This shit's crazy. Well, I think there's something that we can go back to, though. He made one um, nugget out there at, where he said, definitely keep a running budget for ad campaigns that are successful in converting. Corey, I feel like you're good to expound on that, bro. Yes. So what I always tell clients is that setting up your ad system is like, building a snowball you know what i'm saying so it's like if you roll it long enough eventually the snowball will be big enough to hit <laughs> to, to hit to hit you know what i'm saying um but in the beginning it's not right you have to kind of keep doing the work to build it up so what i mean by that is that ads get better the longer you let them run mm -hmm. the more data you let them collect and what a lot of artists make the mistake of is exactly what you said they cut them off too quickly yep like, hey, I've, I've lots of times gotten messages from people like, man, I ran my ads, it didn't work. How long did, I, how long did you run them? Oh, I ran them for two weeks, run them for three months, and they get back to me. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, you didn't even let the ad run long enough to build enough data to self optimize itself, and you didn't give yourself enough time to see the results that were produced by the ad. Right. We're very notorious for telling people that, that you know, choose to listen to us that there are going to be things that you will do with your advertisements today that you won't even see the result of for like three to four months from now. Yes, sir. I actually just had a conversation with a manager. Um, her artist did a campaign with us. And in the moment, I remember on the call, she was me and Jocelyn, yeah, it was cool. I don't really feel like I saw that much. I don't think it's that great. Here we are exactly three months later, and apparently she's been singing all praises, man. Yo, those guys are great. Everything they said was going to happen, happened, and things are amazing, and blah, blah. Three months later, because I'm like, hey, like, there are things that are going to happen that just will not happen now. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to let it go. So, what ends up happening is, let's go back to the guy, that, a guy or girl that does the, the two-week ad, right? You run your ad for two weeks, and then you cut it off. Like I said, one, you effectively killed off um, the self-optimization, right? It can no longer continue to self-optimize because you're no longer pulling that in. But then two, what's going to happen is the next time you set the ad back up, it's going it's going to have to start over. The data doesn't the data doesn't like translate or, or, or spill over. Um, I believe I don't know the exact window, but I think it's if your ad has been inactive for what like thirty days or longer, it essentially just starts over. You know what I'm saying? So now the next time you go to run that ad, you build them from ground zero. So what I've seen have happened with a lot of artists, and where a lot of y'all continue to mess up is you'll go set this ad up, you're running for two weeks. Bro, I got three hundred dollars. I'm gonna run three hundred dollars for two weeks, and right. shit's doing great. And then you go like, "Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kill it." In May, I got a promotion coming up. I'm getting a five k raise. In May, I'm gonna put five k back into this ad and keep things going the way they were now. But what you're not considering is one, like I said, it has to start over. Now you have to re go through another three hundred dollars of learning, or however much it is, to get it there. So yeah. it has to start over. The self optimization hasn't happened, and the ad landscape could be completely different. There could be something happening where people are running more ads, other things are happening to where you're now not getting the same impact that you got all these months ago, right? Versus if you had let the ad run before it got to that point, it may have like upticked a little bit, got a little bit more expensive, but it wouldn't have like the, the same um, drastic outcome of the new ad that started because it has a lot more data to fall back on than the ad that just, that just started. You know what I'm saying? So yep. a lot of this is about like building momentum and then padding out future you. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 we talk a lot about how a lot of the results that artists want to see from their marketing campaigns are the result of momentum being built over time. Like, to you, it looks like it came out of nowhere, but to the team behind it, they might be like, now this was three, four, or five months in the making, right? And the same thing applies with ads. Like, the results that people typically like to see from advertising, like, really attribute to advertising, it's going to take you a couple months to let it build. And, like, there's no way you can, you can make these things happen consistently with short term advertising. Like it's, it's you know I, I look at it like unless you're if you're testing things out trying to see what works yeah like two weeks to a month is a good window to go once you found something that works and is working for you in terms of whatever you want to see ticket sales merch sales streams followers whatever KPI is important if you see that then that shit needs to keep running forever you know what I'm saying for as long as you can afford to keep it going or it makes sense to, to stick on that particular campaign a dollar a day. Yeah, even somebody we have ads where um, I can't think of the artist's name, but we had a campaign like that recently. We was like, "Hey man, like you don't want to come back and do another campaign 
is great. But I would advise you to do is at least put five a day into it. Just keep it going. Just put some day into it. It's not going to have the same result as having them, but you at least you won't cut the ad off and force us to have to start over when you're ready to come back. You know what I'm saying? Because like, that's what a lot of my clients do. Hey, can we run that ad from February and it's November? It's like, no, bro. We basically starting over. There's no point in starting over. We could, but it's probably not going to go right back to where it, could, where it yeah. left off. We're more than likely starting over from scratch. So even if it's like you said, $2 a day, 5 a day, something is better than nothing because you're at least continuing the feed and allowing it to, to optimize itself, which will help you whenever you are ready to eventually put some more money back into it. Hey, bro, that's a fact, dog. That's a fact. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the idea. Yeah. Just keep running the ad that works. Yeah. But. I'm right, getting bored, man. Y'all shoot yourselves in the foot because y'all bored. Hey, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> bored is a great word because that's typically <laughs> what it sounds like to me. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these. I think we'll touch on some of them in the next episode, actually. I think that'll be cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but Damian White actually responded to Kenneth's post and said it's good that you're still finding ways to grow even though these platforms aren't made are making it easy on you ads are a gift and a curse sometimes i love ads but it's it is not clear what success looks like from the campaign money flies down the drain now whose fault is that that's the artist's fault that's the management team's fault mm-hmm. there's a lot of people who are running campaigns with no idea what success looks like to them mm-hmm. they just think oh Hopefully I blow up or, oh, hopefully I get some streams and streams can be a direct result of ads. However, that's not the only result that you can get from ads. And most of the people that we've seen do very, very well from ads haven't been just, hey, I ran some ads, I got some streams and then everything was fine and dandy. It's been things happening in addition on the side of the um the ad campaign and then even coming back to still working on streams and or it's hey i'm trying to run a uh, a tour on this side of the country and you're building things up from there there has to be some strategy and goal attached to it and usually like you said the long-term outcome a three-month timeline is better to look at than these two weeks and most people are looking at two weeks yeah, two weeks, things two like weeks a couple days things like that the, the example I, I always give the people in the network is like I always tell them like there are certain there are certain things that you are looking for to happen from your campaign that just naturally takes time to produce mm-hmm. so like the example I give is like let's say let's say you you young Sean you know what I'm saying you young Sean the wrestler <laughs> <laughs> and you run this Instagram ad it's like 19 year old kid comes across your ad. He's like, oh, this is a pretty cool school. What is this? He goes to Spotify, saves it to his library. He's listening to it. It, you know, in a couple of days becomes his new favorite song. He's playing it 10, 20 times a day. He putting all his friends onto it. He playing it for his girl whenever they're in the car, bro. He's in love with this song. You know what I'm saying? Let's say four months go by, the girlfriend breaks up with him. Just breaks his breaks, breaks his little heart. You know what I'm saying? Breaks is just terrible, man. And, you know, he's depressed. He goes back. He finds comfort in your song. He listens to it 20 times over. And then he gets an idea for a TikTok. He goes and make the TikTok. The TikTok goes viral. And the song pops off. That's a that's a very real thing. Like, that happens yeah. a lot. And, like, there is nothing that you as an artist, you as Young Sean, could have done to speed that process up. There's absolutely nothing you could have done. Yeah. You just had to let time play out and let people be impacted by your music and let them make actions because of the impact. That they yeah. Got. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, when we talk about the time and patience aspect, as cliche as it sounds, is true. Like most yeah. of the big results that you see from artists are usually the result of like long tail campaigns, like months, months, some even years. Like there's artists that we've known been running campaigns around the same time for like years, you know what I'm saying? Until they saw what they saw. And so it's like, that's the one thing I could get every artist to stop would be like, stop expecting, stop expecting like long-term results in a short-term window. If you, if you expect, like to me, an ad campaign, short-term results I'm looking for, maybe a little bit of follower growth, right? Maybe some stream increase. That's, that's short-term stuff you expect to see. Long-term growth is more brand awareness in a particular community, right? Yep. Um, My influencer posts do better because more people recognize me, right? Brand recognition, right? Like I can tell that my my floor of streams has risen because I can tell the same people are now coming out listening to my catalog. Like those are like long term results. You know what I'm saying? Like you can expect to see, but I can't make those things happen in a one to two week time frame unless you spend you know the strong asterisk 
unless you are spending a lot of money. If you spend a lot of money on ads, everything we just said go out the window. If you're not spending a lot of money on ads, right, long term. Yeah, you can force, <laughs> you can force something. You can force a moment. You got a hundred bands, man. You can make a lot happen. Like <laughs> a good example too is I remember an early TikTok campaign where we made this one song go semi-viral. It was like ten thousand videos created to it throughout the life of the campaign. And this is early, early TikTok. We were really just starting. One of the biggest influencers on the platform, Charlie D'Amelio, discovered this artist from that song. Mm -hmm. And then when she dropped her next song, Charlie D'Amelio was one of the first people to post to that song. Oh, snap. Blow shit up. Like, could you speed that up, though? No. No. Because you had to wait till the next song dropped. Right, but she truly discovered, truly became a fan. Now you have somebody who's basically promoting for a living because they're looking for stuff to drop, especially at that time in Charlie's career. Right, mm -hmm. looking for the next viral video. Mm -hmm. Right, find a song from you, do it without you having to pay a dime. Right, that type of organic stuff can only happen if you give it time. Time, bro. Time. Nothing you can do to be time. Yeah. Yep. So. <laughs> bless me with that being said i think it's good to stop right here for the day we got a whole another episode um coming very soon but we appreciate y'all for tuning in yet again as we continue this pod journey uh we'd love to know what y'all's favorite topic was of today or if there's anything that y'all would like us to go deeper in in general not even just for this episode but just topics in general but other than that as always, I'm Brandon Sean. I'm Corey. And we out. Peace.